How I Was Befriended Once in War Times by S.C. Turnbow The first night after the arrival of our regiment in Polk Bayou, three miles above Batesville, Arkansas, which was on the 28th July, 1862, I, with 93 other privates, was used for a chain guard around our camp with instructions to halt everyone that approached 15 paces of us and we were to allow no one to pass into the camp or out of it without the countersign we were ordered to pace our beats we were ordered to pace our beats constantly now our camp was on the east bank of the bayou just below Bricky's mill and near the mouth of miller's creek the place of this encampment was known as camp bragg and the camp was just below the waste field where there was big timber and dense thickets in places. Now the night was very dark and where they posted me was in a thick patch of brush where I could not walk to and fro without gouging out my eyes against the limbs. And after the relief was gone, I quietly sat down and waited for the time to pass. When I grew drowsy, I would get up and stamp around and sit down again and would get up again when I became sleepy. Now finally I heard the relief guard go thrashing along the thicket forty or fifty yards outside of the guard line. They had missed their way and I was amused to hear them floundering about and did not halt them to reveal my place in the line for I was told not to halt anybody unless they got within fifteen paces of me and I wanted to obey my orders. Well, finally, they found their right direction again and approached in 15 paces of me. I halted them and ordered the corporal of the guard to advance and give the countersign, which he did. Now, the corporal was very angry because I did not halloo at them while they were hunting around in the brush to discover me, and he said that he was going to report me to Colonel Shaler. Well, I told him I had no instructions to halt men forty and fifty yards off distant. Now he flew into a rage and said I was asleep, or I would have to challenge them before they got, to, or I would have challenged them before they would got within fifteen paces. Now I told him I had no orders to do that. Now the new fledged corporal was so hot with anger and wanted to be promoted for doing some kind of act charged me with going to sleep on the post, neglect of duty, and disobedience of orders. <laughs> I was not guilty, but I had to bear it all the same, and on the following morning, Colonel Shaler had me placed under guard, and I was kept in close confinement for six days in an old log cabin that stood in the edge of the waste field. Now, on the morning of the seventh day, which was Monday, Colonel Shaler ordered the officer of the guard to send me to his quarters under the escort of two guards. Now, on arriving at his tent, he told me to come in, and after a short, rough talk to me, he said, I intend to have you shot. And he ordered the guards to take me back to the guardhouse. Now, I asked permission of the colonel to explain my case to him, but with a haughty air, he ordered me away. Now, while the guard was taking me through our company ground, some of the boys asked me what Shaler said to me, and I told them how it was. Now, in two hours after I was put back into the guard house, Shaler came into the cabin and took me by the right hand and told me in a very kind way that I was released and to report back to my company for duty. I was so disgusted at the way he abused me in his tent that I never thanked him and wondered why he set me at liberty so soon after threatening me so harsh. But soon I learned the course of it was but I soon learned the course of it as soon as I reached the men and the officers of our company. Now the officers had taken steps immediately to prevent Shaler from having me court martialed for they knew he had no authority to place me under arrest even. Now they informed me as soon as I got back to the guardhouse, Lieutenant Curtis Ray called on Shaler to intercede on my behalf when the renowned colonel ordered him back to his quarters. Then, 
Captain Fred Woods visited Shaler in his den, and he treated him likewise. But they both promptly paid another visit, and then Major John Methan, hearing of it, also paid the colonel a visit. Now he was cut short as the others had been. He then consulted with Captain Wood, Lieutenant Ray, and Lieutenant Bud Woods, and other officers, and went back to Shaler and convinced him that if he undertook to have me shot, it would cause more shooting. Now each one of these officers informed me of the part they had taken on my behalf, and a good number of the private soldiers said that they had put their guns in good shape for use and intended to use them if Shaler made an attempt to have me put on trial for my life. Now if I had been guilty of the charge, the men and officers would not taken it into their hands. But, as it was, they were convinced that I was innocent, and they were determined to defend me. And thus making a bold stroke, Shaler released me at once. A man cannot realize the use of a true and faithful friend until he stands in the need of one. And I felt very grateful to the men and the officers who took part in my defense and have never forgot the memory of any of them. <laughs>